Hi, it's Zach, and welcome to the ninth unit of our Wizards Java game course. Now, today we're going to be doing something pretty exciting. We're going to be creating enemies for our game, so we can have enemies running around doing whatever we'd like. So, uh, essentially what I'm going to do here is you can create all sorts of different enemy types, right? And I actually have tutorials on my YouTube channel as well on how to make different sort of enemies that maybe follow you, uh, that do different things, you know, kind of bounce back and forth off the walls. You can really do whatever you want, but in this, what I'm going to do is just create enemies that roam around freely, that don't really attack you, but there's going to be a bunch of them. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to name it enemy. This is going to extend game object. Let's add in our unimplemented methods here. All right, so in here I'm gonna say x plus equals velocity x, y plus equals velocity y. I'm gonna add in our handler here because we're gonna need collision detection. So handler, handler, this dot handler equals handler. And then here I'm just gonna draw what, what our enemy looks like. So I'm gonna make it, let's make it a, um, what color should we make it? Uh, let's make it yellow. We're gonna say g.fillrec x, y, and we'll make it 32 by 32 for now. So we can also return that new rectangle, x, y, 32, 32. And there we go, we essentially have our enemies. So as you can see with the game object, now we're making it really easy to create like different objects really quickly. So let's add these enemies into our game and then we can make the actual logic for the enemies and what they do. So I'm gonna go back into my level editor here and I'm going to just say, let's make them green. So I'm just gonna make the green 255. And I can just sort of add these wherever I want, right? So we'll add them like here, here. We'll just add a bunch of them, right? And each one of these green pixels is gonna be an enemy spawning. All right, so that should be enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then I'm just gonna update our res folder. So I'm gonna delete this. And then I'm gonna add it back. So here I'm just going to drag that wizard level back in. So now we have the updated wizard level. So now in our game class, what we can do is when we actually create the level, we can also say now if green equals 255 handler dot object new enemy xx multiplied by 32 yy multiplied by 32 id dot enemy and then let's add in our handler as well so now if we run the game as you can see now we have all of our enemies in the game just like that from our file so now we can actually add the logic of them into the game So I essentially just want them to roam around. So what I'm gonna do is add in our random class. So random equals r equals new random. And this is something from our JRE system library that Java already holds. And I'm also gonna create another variable, choose equals zero. And I'm gonna make them have an HP of 100. So health points right there. So in our tick method, I can say choose equals r dot next int, we'll say 10. And essentially what this is gonna do is this is gonna constantly be making our choose variable uh, a random number from zero to nine. And if it hits zero, then we want them to like move in a different direction. So we'll say um, if our choose equals zero, then we can say velocity x equals r dot next int and we'll say four minus negative four plus negative four. And this is just a little algorithm to make us uh, have them a random number between negative four and four. Velocity y, just like that. So now if we run the game, as you can see, now they're all moving around randomly, sort of, you know, really going wherever they want. The problem is though that they can move right through the blocks and, you know, 
that's not something we really want. So let's go ahead and fix that. So what we can basically do is say, hey, if we're colliding with a block, then let's make them automatically choose a different direction. But if they're not colliding with a block, they still have the option to like move around. So we can do this by just creating our for loop again, i equals zero, i is less than handler dot object dot size, i plus plus. And basically what we're gonna do here is look for a, um, our block object, so temp object equals handler dot object dot get i. And then we're gonna say, if temp object dot get id equals id dot block, that means we're colliding with the block, right? And what I'm gonna actually do here is create another get bounds method, but I'm gonna name it get bounds big. And I'm gonna make this minus um, 16. And I'm gonna make this 64. So this is pretty much just making a bounty box a little bit bigger so that we have a little bit of space between the block so they're not like pressed up against the block, if that makes sense, right? And I, I can kind of show you this a little bit here. Let me, let me go ahead and show you. So what I'm gonna do is convert this to a graphics 2D, G2D equals graphics 2D G. And what I can do is I can say G, uh, I can say, G dot set color, color dot, um, just make it green. And you don't have to do this, I'm just kind of showing you. And we can draw our get bounds big. So if we run the game now, you can actually see our bounding box around our enemy. So now if this bounding box hits the wall, we want it to kind of uh, course correct and not go through the wall but we still want this get bounds method because that's what we're gonna use for the actual collision with the bullet. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this now, just so you guys can see. So I'm gonna say if get bounds big dot intersects with temp object dot get bounds, then we can pretty much course correct and say, you know, velocity x plus equals um, velocity x multiplied by 2 multiplied by negative 1. Now this is something that I just came up with building the game before I, I wrote this series. So uh, essentially what it's going to do is it's just going to shoot it back in the opposite direction at double the speed because we really don't want it to go through that block. And this multiplied by negative 1 just inverts our velocity. So if our velocity x is going 5, it's gonna convert this to negative five multiplied by two, it's gonna be negative 10 that it's going in the opposite direction. So it's gonna really sort of ricochet off that wall. Then we can take this and say, else, if it's not colliding, we still wanna be able to choose a different direction. So we go ahead and run the game now. As you can see, they're not going through the walls. That guy's getting a little bit stuck there. Looks like they are getting stuck. We should set, um, actually, you know what? It might be easier if we say X and Y instead of velocity. Let's go ahead and try that. It looks like they're still getting stuck. Let's go ahead and also set velocity X equals zero and velocity Y equals zero if we collide with that wall. So as you can see now, they're not going through the walls. It is still a little bit glitchy. Oh, that guy's going through the wall actually. Maybe we can set this to maybe five. Maybe we'll just see velocity x times equals negative one. So we can just kind of play around with this a little bit and really get something that works well. You know, this is something that you can really debug yourself and really kind of figure out, hey, what, what's gonna work here? 
So they don't look too bad right now. Uh, definitely we could um, correct it a little bit. And future episodes, I'll go ahead and play around with this code and see if I can get something else that works a little bit better. But for now, we have our basic enemies uh, ready to go. So now let's go ahead and make it so that we can actually kill them. So I can say if temp object in our collision method still get ID equals ID dot bullet. Then what we want to do is pretty much say HP minus equals we'll say 50. So it takes two shots to kill them and handler dot remove object um, temp object. So what we're doing is, hey, if it is a bullet that we're colliding with, oh, we actually have to do the get bounds as well. If get bounds dot intersects, I knew I was forgetting something here. Get bounds or uh, temp object that get bounds. Then we'll go ahead and put in this code here. Go ahead and run that. So if we shoot them once, shoot them twice. Oh, and they don't actually die, but now we get our HP going down and our handlers are moving that object. So below, out of our actual for loop, we can say if HP is less than or equal to zero, handler.remove object this, this instance of our enemy. So we shoot them once, we shoot them twice, and there you go, they're dead. So now we can run around killing off these enemies here. So now we have something of a game. We have an enemy, we have a player that can kill them, and we have like a little level we can run around in.